Hello and welcome to another video review. This is Lamplight City for PC. This is a point-and-click adventure game developed by Grindislav Games and published in September of this year for PC. You may be familiar with one of the games they worked on previously, like A Golden Wake or Shardlight, both of which are pretty straightforward point-and-click adventure games, but Lamplight City is a bit different. In this, if you make mistakes and the case becomes unsolvable, then you can just move on to the next case and the story will sort of adapt to the circumstances. This may make it seem like the puzzles in the game are particularly difficult, but that's something I'll cover more when I get to the gameplay. So let's go ahead and actually start delving into this thing and finding out what exactly we're dealing with here. Well, as far as the presentation goes, it's definitely on the better end of these sort of indie point-and-click adventure games, with an art style very reminiscent of the classic Sierra and LucasArts adventures, and the portrait style when you go into actual conversations reminded me an awful lot of Gabriel Knight, complete with the mouth movements when they're talking. In fact, there's more than one reference to Gabriel Knight in this thing, but I digress. The point is that we've come to expect a pretty solid retro throwback with some pretty good pixel art from Grindislav, and that's precisely what we get here. Then you move over into the sound design, and that's where things get slightly messier. And I only say that because while the sound effects themselves do their job and do it pretty decently, although none of them are particularly impressive, and the soundtrack is certainly fitting for the setting they've gone for with a lot of strings and piano, Unfortunately, the music just fades into the background, and to be perfectly honest, I don't remember a single track from the entire game. I actually had to go and deliberately listen to the soundtrack again just to remember what it sounded like, simply because it had faded into the background so much that I just didn't notice it while I was playing. That's not to say that the soundtrack is bad music, it's certainly not, it's actually quite good music. The problem is that as a soundtrack, it has a tendency to just fade into the background and become unnoticeable when you're focusing way more on other things. And one of those things you're going to be focusing on a lot is the dialogue, which means that voice acting is rather important for this particular game. And luckily, the vast majority of the voice acting is pretty solid, although there are certain instances where I'm not really sure what accent they were going for, and it doesn't help that I'm not entirely sure where exactly the setting is, because they do frequently reference real-world locations, and it's set in the 1800s, but it's set in a fictional location known as New Britannia, and I'm not really sure where that's supposed to be. The store page says it's the gateway to Vespuccia, and it's this shining beam of advancement in the new world, which implies it's somewhere in the Americas, and given how everyone seems to have an American accent except for a handful of characters, it's most likely that it's somewhere in the southern portion of North America, which would make sense given that certain accents are more Creole or Cajun, but at the same time, it means it's a bit hard to get your bearings at first, and it means that the accents can sound a bit out of place until you really start to get used to them. Now, all that said, with the exception of a sour line here or there, most of the voice acting is of quite consistent, solid quality, and it does end up actually lending a fair bit to the game, so that does help. And when you take the presentation together as a whole, they've done a rather good job with it. But of course, what really matter here are the story and the gameplay, and the story in this is that you play as Detective Miles Fordham, starting off with the New Britain Police Department and later becoming a private investigator after the death of his partner Bill Legere at the beginning of the game when you investigate a flower shop burger that turns into something a bit more sinister later on. After his partner's death, Miles ends up quitting the force and has a very difficult time sleeping because he constantly hears his partner's voice in his head, constantly reminding him that he needs to go and find the person responsible for his partner's death and see justice done for it. As such, Miles becomes increasingly unkempt and starts taking a soporific to help him sleep, which in turn dulls his mind a bit and also stresses his relationship with his wife, until eventually his friend still at the department, who has been feeding him these basically table scrap cases ever since, trying to at least keep his mind busy and give him something to do, and in turn, of course, being able to solve these table scrap cases, ends up giving him something more major, and the actual game starts. You'll ultimately be going on five cases throughout the course of the game, starting with the first major case that he gets fed, which is the doubting of a particular suspect's guilt in the case of a murder attempt on a member of high society. Now, I don't want to spoil too much of the game for you because this is a very story-heavy title, but suffice to say, the cases do get a bit more complicated until culminating in the final case, which basically brings things full circle. 
And as I mentioned before, the story does sort of adapt to the way you solve the cases. Each of the cases has multiple interpretations, and based on what evidence is available to you, you can draw multiple conclusions to them. So depending on what conclusions you draw from the evidence and the various testimonies that you get, you can ultimately end up with a different outcome of the case, and people will react to you differently based on that. It's an interesting way of handling a detective adventure that means you can't really get stuck on any particular case case. If you just determine that you've gotten everything that you can, then you just draw your conclusion based on what you've got, and then you move on to the next case. As you go through the various cases, you'll also see some character drama, particularly between Miles and his wife, although there's really not a huge amount of character development throughout the course of the game. What development is there is certainly decent enough, but it's not really the main draw of the game. You're not really going to be all that invested in the characters. It's more about the actual mysteries and how you're solving them. And in that regard, the game does remain interesting throughout, although the dialogue can be rather dry sometimes, even though they do try to work in some humor here and there. But the sheer volume of dialogue can be a bit of an issue, particularly if you're someone who's not really all that much on the dialogue part of adventure games and is more about the puzzle solving, because there's actually not a whole lot of puzzle solving in this, as much as there is just interviewing people, asking them questions, and when you do find bits of evidence, mostly just asking people about those bits of evidence, instead of actually trying to solve various puzzles to come to the ultimate conclusion. And that's really where I need to start talking about the gameplay, because that's probably what's going to make or break this thing for you. There's actually not much in the way of gameplay here. There's barely any puzzles in the game, and what puzzles do exist are extremely easy. This means that the vast majority of the game is spent talking to people and trying to learn things based on their testimony. And if you do manage to miss a piece of evidence somewhere and you know that you managed to miss that piece of evidence, then it's probably not because there is no piece of evidence. It's probably because you just didn't notice it somewhere in the environment, or you just made some decisions that ultimately made that piece of evidence unobtainable, because that can happen as well, where you're talking to people and eventually you just irritate them enough that they'll no longer cooperate. There wasn't any particular case that I got stuck on for a particularly long period of time just because I couldn't figure out a puzzle or anything. It was mostly because I had just missed something in the environment and was going over every single environment that I had gone to during that case and trying to find whatever I had missed. This ultimately means that the conclusions for the various cases is not necessarily determined on what evidence is available, it's determined more on how patient you are in going over every single environment with a fine-tooth comb and going over all the information available to you just to make sure you didn't miss anything. And that's what's ultimately going to make or break it for a lot of people, because it's not a mechanically heavy game at all. It's definitely a dialogue heavy and observation heavy game. The interface itself is single click. You just move the mouse cursor over things, and based on what it is, either it will just examine the thing, or you'll actually interact with it. There's no switching between the various interact options. There's no inventory for you to mess around with. The closest thing you've got to it is the case book, and that just contains all of the clues you found, all of the suspects for that particular case, all of the objectives for that case, and, of course, any of the testimony that you've received. This means that you ultimately have to go into this game Game with a specific mindset, and that's thinking more like a detective and not like an adventure gamer. If you're someone who goes into this thing expecting it to play like a traditional adventure game with a lot of puzzle solving, a lot of moon logic, that sort of thing, you're probably going to be extremely disappointed by it. But if you go into it expecting more to just investigate the situation, see if you can find any evidence, and then draw conclusions based on the evidence and the testimony, then you'll probably be able to get a fair bit out of it. But that does mean that the game falls into a pretty specific niche of adventure games, and that's ultimately going to limit its appeal pretty significantly. It doesn't make it a bad game, it's just a very specific adventure game for a specific type of adventure gamer, and I happen to be one of those, but your mileage may vary on that. Ultimately, I give it a 3 out of 5 with that stipulation. If you're part of the niche this caters to, then you'll probably be able to enjoy it. But everyone else, you can probably safely avoid it. Thanks for watching.